this week on 3D Archery, it's so cold out this weekend, I'm wearing a jacket in my basement. And I got a problem. I killed my target. Hey everybody, Greg here. Welcome to 3D Archer. And this week what we're going to do, try to take a shot up target. Guess we killed him, huh? I'm going to try to make a new one out of him. Now I'm not going to make him high, I'm going to make him a special one. And we're going to experiment with a couple things. Maybe it's something we can apply, you might be able to apply, I can down the road, to uh, repurposing some of these targets, right? So let's see if any of this stuff works. Don't mind my washing machine running in the background. It is late at night. So what I gotta do is I gotta remove this and this. Alright, that's my, my first step. So, let's see how it goes. Now, ever wonder what the foam in one of these look like? Huh? I have to say, it is not a closed cell foam, it's definitely an open cell foam, and now I got it all over my jacket. Okay, so my goal is to take this gopher, come down and make it look like he's sticking his head out of the ground, so you gotta shoot him in the head. Alright, a little more cutting, and we'll see how we do. I did a couple more little bit of rough cutting. I got into there. Alright? So great, how are you gonna make them stick in? Well that's the next another good question. So bring it in. You can see he's shot up. So I got these gaps. And look, he's got feet in the back of his head. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some uh, great stuff and fill it in like that and see if we'll seal in and hold it together. I might also put maybe a couple small stakes in the back. I mean, it's going to be tough to hit it, and you know the odds are. Alright, so, then my next question would be to fix all this up. I have an idea I'm going to try it. Alright, so let me do that, and we'll come back and I'll show you my next idea, and we'll see if that works. Alright, next up, and you hear my furnace in the background now. So I cut out some wires, pretty simple. I'll just stick them in there, put them on there. They're thin enough so arrows shouldn't hurt them and they shouldn't hurt the arrows. But how am I going to fix all the damage, right? So I'm going to try a couple things. One, I'm going to seal the gaps up with, like I said, great stuff. Great stuff. But I've seen these, I've seen it advertised, I don't know how good it is. I bought it just to find out. Loctite foam. It says it's, um, Four times denser than great stuff. Hmm. But the other one I want to try, the one I see on TV all the time, is this Flex Seal. <clears throat> it's just rubberized paint, I believe, I don't know. But the problem with a lot of these, like this one, oh, this one's been in my basement. I take it outside from time to time. But even with this, the foam's drying, it's drying out. You know, so if I figure maybe the flex seal will seal it in, maybe it'll keep whatever moisture is left in there so this um, foam doesn't dry out as much. All right, so that's my next step. I'm going to try to set it up and do it that way. You know what? We'll see how it comes out. All right, so I got them on, but a little trick. So it sticks in the ground. I got these two prongs here. Yeah, not the greatest, but it'll stop them from flopping around. So you just stick the two prongs in the ground, and it'll look a little bit like that. All right, now to seal in the gaps with some great foam. Now, the neat thing, or the bad thing, about all this, this foam is these little things are useless after the first try. I turned around and found 
that creates stuff sells these tips. <laughs> so I'll try it like that. All right, now. If you use curry foam, you know you're going to need to put on one thing, which I'm going to go get now. Alright, now we're going to let it dry, expand, it only takes a few minutes, and then we'll uh, trim it off and take it from there. Oop, see the hole? Don't want no ear pockets. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, if you ever wondered how much this stuff expands, now, remove it, right? Um, you have this nice little tool, which you can buy, called a hot knife, right? You can also use a soldering gun. Anything with heat will cut right through this like it's nothing. But you don't always have that. So let's see what we can. I have one, but I'm not going to use it because the odds are you don't. So let's see what I can find in my mess of a basement. Well, I can do a couple things. See if we can cut it out just like that. Don't cut it perfect to the spot. Cut it pretty close. Right. I know what you're saying. Great. It looks nasty. You're right. But when I get it all trimmed up, I'm going to paint it. And then we'll take it from there. I'm also going to try the other coating techniques I have. Or, you just grab a handful, rip it off. <laughs> and it's not even dry, and it's been like 40 minutes. Alright, back to work. Alright, so what I did is I cut it off, and I also took some 60 grit sandpaper and just rip, ripped off the edges a little bit. You know, it does not have to be perfect. Remember, the big thing to remember I learned this from Halloween displays, is this does not have to be perfect. You're not going to be looking at it from 5 feet away, 10 feet away. It's going to be 20 yards, 15 yards. So don't stress out the big details so much, all right? Just take it for what it is and shoot it as it is. All right, I'm going to try one more thing I want to try, all right? And then I'm going to do the testing of the, of the paint. All right, so actually I'm going to hold off on the other one for I'm going to do a different target. We'll try that. All right, so this paint, the Flex Seal. Hmm. What does it say? Directions. Greg, get your glasses. Surface must be clean, dry, and free of grease, oil, and dirt. Ain't going to happen. Increase adhesion by scratching the surface. Brush. Roll, dip, or pour directly onto surface. Uh, cool entire surface. Oh, coat entire surface. Okay, so it doesn't look like I have to shake it or anything. Don't shake. Oh. Let's take a look. You know, totally off target and subject. My little workbench you see here. I built it. I um, found the plans online. They're free. And it told you exactly all the materials you had to be and told you where to get them at Home Depot and bought it. I mean, it's a fantastic workbench. You know? And the best part is, like anything else, you made it. You 
always seem to appreciate things more when you make it. Now, this paint is going to be white because that's the color I bought originally. But my target's not going to be white, so I'm not going to stress it too much. All right, because I'm just going to paint over it. Now just there we go, almost something like that, which is probably ooh man, you talk about thick. Probably could just. This thing, they made that boat. Now I see how they made the boat. Yeah, probably, this is that commercial, the guy puts the stuff in that uh, mesh screen and makes a boat out of it. Well, yeah, you could, but they used a lot to do that. All right. But I'm here. This is like painting with pudding. <laughs> Oops, on my hand. I knew that. Neatness and Gregory don't go along. coated. Now, I'm telling you right now, really tough to brush on. It's much easier just take it, pour it, and then use the brush to spread it out. And pouring on looks like the way to go. It's covering it really thick. Hopefully make it durable. we got to see how an arrow will go through it. But I'm going to let it dry overnight. We'll come back tomorrow, check on it, give you an update, and then we'll start painting it. But I think we might be onto something here. All right, see you tomorrow. All right, here it is, 24 hours later, dry. It's rubber paint, it really is. It's like a, a rubber. It's soft, it's pliable. Um, don't know how an arrow's gonna go through it, but we'll find it out. Definitely, best way to do it is to pour it on it and then brush it down. I mean, it covered up different areas. Interesting stuff to say the least. Hmm. All right, so now I'm going to paint it. Um, with Chuck Dark. That will be light colored. Don't have much light, but you know, let's see what we can do. Well, we'll see how the paint adheres to it. Adheres to it, not heals. Adheres. Colors are done. And now I'm going to paint the little nose black, paint his mouth, paint his eyes. We'll see how it looks. I'll probably uh, clear coat them too. Alright. So did a little research on the internet. We found woodchucks like anybody else or anything else. Comes in multiple shapes, colors, and sizes. And a lot of them have a little what, lighter spot right around there. So using my airbrush and I'm going to try to recreate that. I love airbrushing, but I suck at it. Well, 
What I suck at is mixing the paint right. Yeah. All right, let that dry. Do a little bit more. Getting ever so closer. There we go. So, oops, forgot that here. <coughs> all right, there he is. So, it's all painted. All right. I can add some, I'm gonna add some touches here and there, and then I'm gonna. Doll coat them, and you should be done. All right, went out and bought some clear coat. We're gonna do this. this is typical stuff I buy right here. It's matte, so it'll take away a little bit of the shine. See how it works. Now, one thing I didn't tell you, which I, my fault, my bad, however you want to say it. When you work with stuff like material like great stuff any foam a lot of this stuff will eat it so you got to test it before you use it and I mean it'll eat it bad so before you do it always test it all right he's shinier than he was before let that dry Maybe one more coat, and we'll be done. All right, the go fair with a matte finish. Thank you.